If you're wanting to play louder and faster on the drums without feeling stiff or developing pain in your hands or in your thumb from having to squeeze the stick too tightly, then you are in the right place today. I'm sharing with you the fulcrum shift that you can make right now that literally will give you an instantly more controlled yet more relaxed grip. This is really cool. And this is all so that you can have the endurance to power through your favorite songs, playing as loudly and quickly as you want to without becoming exhausted or hindered by hand or thumb pain. You can do this. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so excited that you're hanging out with me today. I help beginner and intermediate drummers become the musicians others actually want to play with and listen to by teaching you the core drumming skills that really get you fast results and save you a lot of time in the practice room. Today's gonna be a lot of fun because by the end of this lesson, you'll know the fulcrum shift that instantly gives you relaxed control. You'll have three exercises to do to strengthen your wrists and build endurance. And lastly, you'll understand the essential arm motion that guarantees relaxed playing. But first, hey, if you are a beginner drummer, I have a special gift for you. Most likely the biggest two challenges you face are not knowing what to practice, that's a big one, but also not being able to play your favorite songs yet. I know that's frustrating. You just wanna get up and running and play your favorite songs, but you're just not able to do it yet. Don't worry, because I've got you covered. Grab my totally free PDF e-guide called 25 Practical Rock Grooves and Fills for the Beginner Drummer. This is your jump start. After grabbing this free guide, you'll have 25 plus grooves and fills you can use in nearly every song you learn, and you'll have confidence that you can speak the language and know that basic drumming vocabulary so you can begin jamming and sounding great quickly. I think you'll have a lot of fun with this, so go grab that free guide. It is a total no-brainer. All right, on with today's lesson. The fulcrum shift that instantly gives you more relaxed control. So as a preface to this, I want you to do something with your hand. So if you've ever grilled steak or you know somebody who's grilled steak, maybe you've heard of this trick you can do to basically get a feel for what the steak should feel like as it's cooking. So take your, take your left hand, for instance, and have your thumb touch your index finger and feel this muscle right here in your thumb, your, basically your thumb muscle. So take, make a mental note of how soft or how firm that is Basically, this is your rare steak if you're trying to uh, understand what a rare steak is supposed to feel like. Go to the next finger. Okay, it's a little bit firmer. Now we're on ring finger. Okay, it's getting pretty firm. Pinky finger. Okay, now it's very firm. That would be your well done steak. So keeping this in mind, I want you to try this out. Notice the differences in how much force your thumb is having to exert because it's having to reach across your hand. Keep this in mind. Think about steak. Now that I've got you hungry, keep the steak thing in the back of your mind because this is what's going to basically explain the whole shift that we're getting into today. So the first grip that I ever really used was a, an index finger grip about right out here. I was gripping near the end of my index finger and eventually that shifted to the end of the middle finger. But either way, if you're gripping out here with your stick, notice how firm this thumb muscle is. Not as firm as when we were doing the, the medium well steak right here on the pinky, but it is fairly firm because you're having to, you know, your thumb is having to put some pressure here in order to make sure you don't lose the stick. And that is where the pain usually comes in and where we end up feeling stiff and tired when we're playing loud and fast because what's happening as we're playing louder and faster, we're having to exert more force on the stick. We're having to press down harder so that the stick doesn't fly out, which means this muscle is going from nice and relaxed, rare steak, to the super firm, medium well steak, but that's not good for our thumb because it, we're gonna be exhausted and our thumb is gonna be hurting. Used to, this whole muscle, this whole part of my hand would just be hurting after playing a Sunday morning worship set at my church because I was playing pretty loud and we, if we played a fast song, I was having to squeeze too tight on my sticks. So I knew that I had to make a shift, literally a shift here and figure out, okay, how can I adjust my fulcrum so that I'm not actually having to press as hard with my thumb? Here's what I want you to do. Go from, if, if you're doing this fulcrum right here, whether it's index or middle, really this works best with middle, but I want you to slide the stick a little bit further up, more to like right here. Now I know this looks like it potentially goes against the whole loose open hand kind of thing. And that's something I've always preached for years. Back when I first started teaching, I was always telling students, be as open as possible, as much space as possible. But what's cool is that even if you're allowing your fulcrum to shift up to here, you can still have this kind of motion in your hand. There's still plenty of space. And so we really don't have to worry about that. What I want you to notice is what happens to this thumb muscle when we move the fulcrum from here up to here. So if we're gripping right here, 
we were pretty firm here. We're having to exert some, some strength here from our thumb. But if we slide up to here, suddenly, notice how this muscle's more relaxed. It's weird, it's like magic. Suddenly, our thumb does not have to press as hard. It just kind of naturally lives right here. And it all comes back to our thumb is reaching to here instead of out to here. We're having to bend our hand differently and reach further with our thumb if our fulcrum is out here. Just like reaching over to the pinky for the medium well stake, our thumb is having to work harder to do that versus when we're right here, it's a lot easier. And so basically our thumb is here in the, the rare stake position, gripping the stick right here. So this is really cool. So I want, what I want you to try doing is just move your fulcrum from here to right here, even if it looks like this, even if it seems super close to your palm, you'll notice you can exert more pressure on the stick so that you have more control while staying relaxed. You're not gonna, you know, the stick isn't just gonna fly out. You'll maintain that control and you'll be able to have this wide open sort of loose motion while keeping that hinge point because that's what's so important here. You have to keep the hinge point and if the hinge point goes away, it's all gonna fall apart. And that is so key when you're playing loud and fast. If things get stiff, you're gonna be in trouble. You're gonna have a sore arm, you're gonna have wrist pain. We don't wanna, you know, create any kind of arthritic pain that shouldn't be there. You're gonna have thumb pain. Your arm might get super stiff. So we have to make sure that we are relaxed down here. This is where it all starts. If you're not relaxed here, how are you gonna be relaxed up here? How is your whole body gonna be relaxed as you're playing? Great drumming feel, great time, great pocket, great musicality, and confidence all comes from being relaxed. And that relaxation all starts here and pretty much goes up from there and travels through the rest of your body. We'll talk about a, a little bit more of the arm relaxation here in a moment. So shift your fulcrum up to here and give it a try. Just make yourself do it, see if it feels weird at first. What this will allow you to do is grip more firmly, but still stay relaxed as you get louder and faster. Now, just a clarification here, because I've got a lot of lessons about grip and all the different types of grip and changes, subtle changes we wanna make depending on what we're playing. If you're playing something that's very slow and relaxed like this, you can totally still do this right here. Have your fulcrum out here because you're not having to put much pressure on the stick from your thumb when you're playing very lightly. You're just gently dropping the stick and letting it bounce. When you're playing on a high tuned surface and you're just playing real slow with a nice big arcing motion, you can grip out here, totally relaxed, but you run into trouble when you get faster because it starts to turn into this. That's where you have to allow it to shift up. So basically what we're getting at today, this is the grip shift you need to make if you're going to play louder and faster without running into pain. Just as an example, watch the shift that's gradually happening in my hand as I go from slow to fast while basically keeping a pretty loud volume here. A couple of subtle shifts that you probably saw there. First, so the six started here, then it gradually started sliding up, index finger staying loose. As I, get as I got faster, middle finger kind of curled around a little bit more, and as I got really fast, then index curled around too. So then both of these were like this, but the fulcrum was still right here. Fulcrum did not change, even with index curled around. Then as I slowed back down, index gradually loosened up, middle finger opened up a little bit, and the stick slid down. So that's the progression that needs to happen. If you're trying to play fast, and loud, you have to let the stick, number one, slide up, number two, middle curls around a little bit, but not tightly, just a little bit, and then index curls around too, and that is how you can get that nice, firm, but not stiff grip for playing loud and fast. So in review, three big things that this helps you do. Number one, it allows you to grip more firmly with less effort, and therefore less thumb exertion. That's huge. Number two, it allows you to also use your index finger so that you essentially create that double fulcrum. It's not truly a double fulcrum, but it kind of feels that way, kind of looks that way, where it looks like we're using both fingers for a fulcrum. Technically, that's not possible. Really, the fulcrum is still here, but it kind of becomes a fulcrum that's secured also by the index finger, which helps when we're going really loud and fast. And so that's, that's the second thing. It helps us form that double fulcrum. And then number three, in general, this is pretty interesting, this creates more skin contact on the stick which helps keep the stick from sliding. If you've dealt with a sliding stick, notice how if we're gripping out here, 
there's actually not a lot of moments, like there's not a lot of moments in time here where the stick is actually touching skin or touching my palm because it's kind of just out here wide open. And this is great for when we're playing very slow and relaxed. But as we get faster, we have to close in a little bit. And what this does, when we're up here, this means that the, the shaft of the stick is all the time coming up against our palm. It's not being hindered by the palm, it's just it comes up against the palm. That's the way this works. Our hand is touching the stick a lot. And as we're going louder and faster, we have to play more from our wrist. And so the stick is, our hand is gradually closing in around it more. And what that also helps do, besides the fact we're being firmer right here, it helps keep the stick from sliding. And so that's really cool. So that's a very powerful reason why you want to adjust your grip to this when you're going loud and fast. Because if your hands have just a little bit of clamminess, just a little bit of sweat, or you put some lotion on, then that gives you a whole bunch of friction opportunity here that will keep the stick from just flying out as you're playing. There's nothing worse than feeling like the stick sliding and then squeezing too hard with your thumb to compensate. I've been there, done that. I don't want you doing that because that's gonna give you all that thumb pain. So allow the stick to settle back into here, fingers to gently close around. That way you've got some of this going on and it helps keep the, the stick from sliding out. Now, three exercises to strengthen your wrist and build endurance because all of this is only as good as your forearm strength is because we gotta have some wrist strength, we gotta have some forearm strength in order to play loud and fast. And so, you, you know, you might not be able to just, you know, hammer this out right now, especially if you're a total beginner, but that's fine. You'll build up the strength. What's important is that you have those core mechanics in place first, like we've just covered. So if you're tracking with me and you've done that, you're working on making sure you're shifting your grip to this, you are totally ready for that loud, fast playing. The only thing lacking might be just the strength to do that well and do that consistently so that you can just sit here and hammer out the eighth notes however loud and fast you need to go. And this is especially important thinking right hand. We're keeping time. We're playing a lot of fast timekeeping songs. We want to have that kind of strength. If we're playing on the hi-hat. We want to have that kind of strength. If we're playing like a blues shuffle, boom, da -ga, da -dun, da -ga, da -dun, da -ga, definitely need to have some strength with the left hand. If we're playing a lot of backbeats in a fast song, well, that takes some strength here. So needless to say, we need to have that wrist strength. So here are three great ways to build that up quickly. And I say quickly, You'll see results within probably a few days or a week, maybe a couple weeks. But within a month, two months, three months, you'll see a lot of results from working this kind of stuff. So it is some of the results are pretty quick, but you also have to be patient because there are long-term results that happen too. You build that stamina and that ability to just endure through a fast song over time. So be patient with this. First thing is just lay a towel on your pad or on your snare. This is a fairly thick, eh, it's not really that thick, it's actually a fairly thin towel, but I've got it folded over once. So there's definitely less rebound as a result. For comparison, it's still actually a good bit more rebound than my floor tom. If you're a total beginner, I recommend just have a towel folded twice. If you're a little bit beyond that and you're ready to have even less rebound, you could fold it over again. But every towel is different, so there's not a, a magic number here of numbers of times to fold your towel. So now this is a four layer, folded twice. Practice full stroke eighths. When I say full stroke, I mean having the stick bounce all the way up. And so we're trying to play pretty loudly. We're not trying to <clears throat> just hammer it out angrily, but a good medium to loud volume. Full stroke, so the stick is coming up to 12 o'clock or even a little bit beyond. I know from there you probably don't see how far back the stick is. It comes back to about right here a lot of times as I'm doing this. So a little bit beyond 12 o'clock sometimes. Just focus on staying relaxed. And remember as we're doing this, we've shifted our fulcrum up to here. A good tempo to start this is probably about 100. That's about where I'm at now, 100, 105. A great tempo to get going with this and of course do this with either hand you'll find that one hand is most definitely stronger than the other odds are left hand is the weak hand and it's going to require a little bit more work you'll find if you've been playing for a long time your right hand naturally builds up a lot of strength from all the timekeeping left hand on the other hand can be a little bit lacking so maybe practice left hand first and then right hand and then go back and hit left hand again before being finished that way you're getting in that extra practice with the left hand working out that left wrist a little bit more So 100 beats a minute is a great place to start. If you feel like you need to go a little bit slower, that's fine, but we do wanna start working things out, and I think that's a good magic tempo for getting the workout. And as you can get up to 120, even better. 
I don't have a metronome in my ear. You can tell me how precise or imprecise I am here, but I'm roughly guessing at it. 120 is a good goal to have, and as you can get faster than that, great. But the goal should be to keep this going for a minute. Be able to keep these eighth notes going for 60 seconds without stopping. Have them as consistently loud and smooth as you can. And if you can't do it for 60 seconds, just slow the tempo down a little bit. Now, something else you can do that is probably an even better workout, you're sitting at your drum set, play these same eighth notes on open hats or loose hats, like that, because there's not a lot of rebound on the hi-hats. And that's why we wanna get really good at playing on surfaces with not a lot of rebound. You can practice this on your floor time, you can practice this on the hi-hats, but the idea is be practicing on a surface that doesn't just spring the stick right back up. That way you're having to get a little bit of a workout here. Keep it going for a minute, and then as you're able to increase the tempo, increase the tempo. And of course you can do left hand there on the hi-hats as well. Also, so that was the second thing. So first exercise on a towel, either the towel is one layer or fold it over two layers, fold it over again four layers, wherever you need to start, I'll let you assess that. If you're a total beginner, start off with not a whole lot and definitely make sure you're getting good relaxed rebound first as a prerequisite before doing any of this. But then begin folding the towel over so you're decreasing the rebound. Then from there you can either practice on the floor time or the hi-hats. So now exercise number three, practice fast fours on each hand. So basically this, we're trading off. We're doing four notes right hand, four notes left hand, and this allows us to get to a higher speed because it's hard to just sit here and go, gah, gah, gah. nobody's gonna keep that up for very long unless you're just insane chops YouTube drummer, which I don't think any of us are probably. So we can kind of cheat and practice getting that speed by trading off and giving each hand a break. So rather than just going for a minute on each hand, we can just do four notes with each hand. You could also do eight starting out. And so on. Then practice doing fours. Fours get a little bit trickier because you're having to smoothly trade off. You wanna make sure that that transition from right to left and back to right is smooth. Ideally, the sound does not change. Ideally, a blindfolded listener is just hearing and doesn't hear you trading off. That's the goal. Get them nice and even, no accents, just hammering them out. And of course, you can start this as slow as 100 if you want to, then gradually work your way up, making the goal to actually get pretty quick with this. That's probably about 150, and as you get faster, the stick height can decrease, of course. We're still trying to get as close to a full stick height as we can, rather than going... Because if we're going softly, that's where we can actually use fingers, which we'll talk about a little more in a moment. We want to focus on our wrist. We want to focus on that wrist motion, that sheer strength that's requiring forearm, so that's why we want to keep our stick height up. So again, don't push yourself to the extreme that it gets sloppy and falls apart. Figure out where can I play this cleanly while getting a good workout and keep it going for one minute. Now as a bonus exercise, bonus fourth exercise, you can do what is just usually commonly referred to as the French grip exercise, where we grip our sticks like this and we propel it purely with the fingers. Now this doesn't play into so much the, the forearm stuff. Like if we're trying to play loud and fast, the fingers are not really having much to do with that because our fingers do really well with light, quick playing. Like if we're playing quietly, you know, the fingers can come in and get going really quick, but fingers don't work well for playing loudly. As soon as you're up to about right here, it makes more sense to use some wrist instead. But as a bonus, to really round out your endurance building, your strength building, do the French grip exercise too. Practice just forming your fulcrum out here with the index like this. This is a totally different type of grip. And then propel it with the fingers just like that. Focus on making sure you're not using your wrist, not using your arm. We're 100% driving the stick with the fingers while trying to keep a full stick height. If you can get the eighth notes at 120, that's awesome. And again, keep it going for a minute without stopping. Try to get it nice and consistent. This is a great workout. And as you get that form down, as you get it smooth and consistent, just start folding over the towel more. So you're really getting a workout, then you can even do it on a pillow. This will help with the quiet things you need to play, but it'll also help if you choose to use a French grip on the ride and play more like this.
And so if you're into playing any kind of quick ride pattern, like, or swing, then the finger strength there, finger agility can really come in handy. So that's just an added bonus, doesn't necessarily apply directly to the loud fast playing, but it will help round out your grip all in all. So work on that French grip exercise too. Now, our last thing we've got to cover, the essential arm motion that guarantees relaxed playing. This is big, I've talked about this in a recent lesson. It's the whole concept of pulling the sound, pulling the sound out of a drum when you have a low rebound surface. It's almost like air drumming because if you don't have the natural rebound, you're having to create the rebound. And so when you're playing on a floor tom or you're playing on open hats or like the edge of a ride cymbal, you can't just rely on rebound to send the stick back to you. You're having to lift it up manually. And so there's a lot we can learn and gain from practicing that intentionally. Uh, number one, it gets our right stick out of the way of our left if we're crossing over when we're playing on the hat. Having this motion rather than just living down here, we're basically creating an artificial rebound by getting into this motion. And what you'll notice as I'm doing this motion, as I'm playing anything, honestly, especially on the floor tone, I'm not just playing for my wrist, I'm also using forearm. And that's really important and often neglected, and this was something I hadn't really thought about that much until I was working with a lot of one-on-one -on -one students and I was noticing that a lot of students were quite literally applying the whole, you know, play more from your wrist than your arms. And that's something that we've all had pounded into our heads from great teachers, play from your wrist, not your arms. But if you're only playing from your wrist, it gets really stiff. You have to have a little bit of arm going on there. Nobody seems to talk about that. And so that's something I wanna make sure you understand that yes, we're playing from our wrists. We've gotta work out the wrists. We, sh we should work out some fingers too, but we're also relying on our arm to kind of be like the shocks in a way, to kind of absorb, absorb some of that wrist motion so that we don't hurt our wrists, so we don't strain our wrist, but also so we can get into this smooth kind of playing, the smooth sort of relaxed, lethargic sort of playing and be able to do the whole concept of pulling rebound out where there's not rebound, doing a prep stroke for a backbeat, one and two and three and four. That way we're not rushing, that way things are relaxing in time and we move around the kit smoothly. So many benefits to practicing this. So the exercise I want you to do, and I'm gonna link the, the recent lesson where we talked about this in more detail. What I want you to do is practice playing singles on your thigh. So there should be no rebound, no rebound on your leg. Practice playing singles, so that it looks like this. Instead of looking like this, this is not what we want. Because right now the sticks are just falling onto my leg. I'm feeling the sticks hit my leg. Instead we wanna play like this. Where yeah, we're still feeling them, but we're pulling them back out. So actually we don't feel the shock of the stick so much. Because if I go like this, I kinda, I feel the stick more. It doesn't hurt, but I feel it there like I'm being hit with a drumstick. But if I go like this, and I pull it right back up, I still feel it, but not as much. It's like the stick suddenly feels lighter. And so that's what we're going for. We wanna have that sort of light touch so that we can pull the rebound right back out, pull the sound out, so to speak, and we can practice this literally by air drumming. And what you'll find in doing this, you have to be a little bit more firm with your grip, wrap the fingers around a little bit, but mostly use some forearm. That helps a lot. If you're trying to do this only with wrist, it tends to get very stiff like this. But if you can allow a little bit of forearm motion, even if it's just an inch or so, that helps so much. It'll help you feel much more relaxed as you're doing this. And that really is the final piece of the puzzle. It's basically this, this whole threefold approach here. If we're going to play loud and fast well, we've gotta make sure we're gripping well, we're optimizing our grip for putting enough pressure on the fulcrum point, on the stick, to have control, but still stay relaxed. So that was the first thing we covered. And the second important, really crucial part is we have to build up the strength. We have to be working on building up that strength, which will happen naturally as you're just playing the drums all the time. So that's important. And then this final thing, this final piece of the puzzle, we want to make sure we're maneuvering around the kit in a, in a totally relaxed way and that nothing is stiff because that's very important as we get faster, making sure we're staying relaxed. And so it's the final piece of the puzzle. If you do all three of these things, you're going to find that you are quickly able to get louder and not feel stiff, not feel clumsy. As you build up your strength and as you really solidify this grip, you'll find you're able to get faster and not get tired. And all in all, I hope that this means for you that you're able to play your favorite songs with ease. You're no longer getting exhausted by the middle of the song. You're no longer feeling pain in your thumbs. You're no longer getting stiff and just feeling tense by the end of the song. You're no longer fearing those things happening because I remember being in that place where I remember playing 
playing at church on a Sunday morning and actually being afraid that I was going to be getting tight and stiff and be in pain by the end of the worship set. Ironically, because I was fearing that, I would get stiff. And <laughs> it was kind of that downward spiral. And so I want you to be free of that. You can be free of that when you practice this. And the huge number one thing to focus on here is that fulcrum. If you miss that, really none of this is going to matter nearly as much. So if we apply the Pareto principle, 80-20 here, 80% 80 of all this is just get that fulcrum right. Do that, the rest can follow. So focus on that first point. I really hope that helps you out. So as we wrap up, question for you, are you using an index finger fulcrum or a middle finger fulcrum? Is there one or the other that's your favorite? What have you always done? What are you learning right now? Or have I convinced you to change? Maybe you were doing an index finger, maybe I've convinced you to try out middle finger. Let me know in the comments below. Tell me which you think is better, which works better for you, because we are all different. There's not a perfect one grip for everybody, so maybe index is better for you. I want you to try middle. Let me know how it goes, but let's get a discussion going in the comments as we go today. And hey, if you're a beginner, don't forget to grab that 25 practical rock grooves and fills for the beginner drummer. It's gonna help you learn the language and help you learn the basic vocabulary of the drums. So it literally you can piece together the parts and the fills you need for 95, maybe even 99% of just basic rock songs out there. So you can get up and running, have a lot of fun on the drums right off the bat. Cause hey, between that and this lesson, you've got a lot in your arsenal to really succeed on the drums and really have a lot of fun playing some songs. So take action, download that guide, it's in the description and uh, take it to your practice room. Get to work, take action on this. Know that you can do it, know that you can do this. I hope you were encouraged, I hope you were empowered today to go and accomplish some great stuff on the drums, even if you're a total beginner. So thanks for hanging out with me today. This has been a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. I will see you next week. I'll see you on the next lesson. Have a great week. Stay non-glamorous.